Hey everyone, it's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about how I am planning my lessons in class for the fall. I think some of you know that I teach at the university level, and it's a small, dynamic, uh, discussion-based class, and with the fall being so uncertain and most likely being online, I'm trying to learn about how to wrap my head around, how to lesson plan, how to adjust and pivot, if I never heard that word again be too soon. Um, but trying to translate some of those things online. The thing that's really sparked this was I went to an online conference last week. And maybe some of you have done that as well, but it gave me a really good sense of what students might experience when they do an online course load. First of all, this conference was translated online and there was a main course track that you got to be a part of. There was some like all over conference things like keynotes and those kinds of discussions. And then there were workshops you could sign up for. In-person workshops are totally fine. It was a 90 minute experience in person that translated into a week long kind of asynchronous on your own kind of a thing, which I think is what a lot of students are going to be taking in the fall. They took two. Normally, again, that's not a problem. But what I experienced in that week, even though it was subject matter that I'm very interested in, was a lot of exhaustion, a lot of confusion, and maybe this is already stuff that you know, but it's different when you feel it in your body, right? And you might've seen on my Instagram stories, I was exhausted by all of the different platforms all the instructors were using, the different pace of work, and even though perhaps within each of those courses, it was clear and consistent, it felt very disorienting because I spent the whole first day being like, wait, am I looking here for information? Wait, is it over here? I signed up for another platform, another account. And I imagine that students will be feeling that too. I had 15 tabs open. I had so many different like, okay, I have to do a discussion post here. I have to do, this. and each instructor is different. Even um, if your student is only taking a couple classes, it is a really disorienting thing. It takes longer to do everything. And I wonder how long it would take students to kind of even just get the hang of it. So there's a couple things that I've learned from that experience is one, I am cutting as much as I can from our curriculum. It was already packed when it was in person and I could you know, synchronously explain things, but I am really committed to cutting some shit out. <laughs> uh, there's just too much and it takes too long to process. And it has become one of those things where even though the instructors were saying this reading would will take you 10 minutes or this activity will take about 30 minutes, what doesn't get accounted for is the amount of time it takes to process information. So that's the second thing that I'm committed to is just accommodating for the amount of time it takes to really get into doing any kind of coursework or activity. When you look at a recipe, it says, you know, 10 minutes prep, 20 minutes cooking. And what I find to be true, at least for me, is that, Nadia, how does this take 10 minutes? Okay, how did you even account for it? It takes me five minutes just to even find my, my supplies. It takes me another five minutes to dice the onion, you know? And so I'm trying to translate that over to teaching and trying to make that as easy as possible. Have the links ready. Uh, have all the instructions really clear. Have your communication really, really purposeful. And instead of sending a ton of messages and clarifying and doing my best to be as prepared with that communication as possible so that I'm not just sending like, oh, shoot, I forgot X, Y, and Z. Because every additional message, I can imagine that the other instructors are also sending additional messages, which is confusing. A lot of planners will tell you, set aside amount of time to work on, on this per day. And I think you can try. That's not my personality. And so trying to be clear about how long things might take or suggestions or pacing it out for people because this experience was supposed to be on your own at your own pace throughout the week. But since uh, in person you can go into that class for 90 minutes and just experience it deeply and then you kind of are able to let it go. I've got the whole thing, I experienced it and now I can decide how to process. But when it's an asynchronous experience that goes on, you don't really know when 
it's kind of over. I felt on my toes the whole time. I felt like I couldn't put it away. I felt like everything was was continuing on at all times and that I was missing out. I was falling behind and I, I could never keep up. And when you're in your home, when you're learning online in the context of your life, things are pulling at you. When you're at school or you know in a concentrated in-person experience, you can kind of cut away some of the other stuff. But when you're in your home, all those things are still pulling on you. And as you might know, if you have been working from home, things are constantly calling for your attention. Uh, the the dishes, the laundry, the, the mess you've left out on the floor, right? So there's so much separating your attention and fragmenting it that just for our sanity, let's just cut it down. What I've learned from all of that is that we prioritize care and compassion first. And from that base, learning can happen. And I am not here this semester to be really nitpicky about page requirements or anything like that, but just to focus on what are we learning? How do we negotiate this together? Because I've realized nobody knows what the hell is happening. And uh, we need to work together to figure that out. And, and the best way to do that is to ask your students and ask them how they're experiencing things, how they're doing, what will make things work. Because if it just becomes another thing they have to do, then what's the point? So trying to lead with that compassion first and creating a structure that doesn't require them to ask for such help, for such leniency, and just structure that in to the whole course automatically. So here's how I'm operationalizing that into a planning structure to get me from today, August, August 1st, to the beginning of school we have September 7th. So you may remember earlier this summer, I was using this cardboard sheet and I just had the numbers on one side for the week of the semester and then different post-it notes for the readings, the assignments, the in-class activities. And I know there are digital forms of, of post-it notes and things like that that I can arrange, but there's something so much more effective for me about tactile and being able to move stuff around in an instant, not really needing to think about the technology it takes to click and drag. So I did this first based on last semester. And then I kind of look and take into account the unique markers of this fall semester. So something I'm really thinking about, for example, is week nine, which is the election. It is isn't going to be an intense season, and it would be silly for me to think that emotions and um, those kinds of current events aren't going to affect the learning in the classroom. So this was my first thing that I did, and removing some of the post-it notes so that it becomes more digestible, trying to see what, what can be combined and shifted, and then, you know, I, I left all of those here just in case I wanted to add them back in. But I first did uh, an overview and then called it down. And then I'm going to show you how I'm using the more like weekly pad to do some more initial translation work and then how I'm going to use that throughout the semester. So I'm going to be using this cloth and paper weekly pad to make sense of how the semester evolves and kind of keep track of some of the things happening in class. So I teach a class that happens twice a week and Right now, one day is going to be online and one day is going to be in person and eventually, or maybe even before the semester begins, it will change. I'm filming this on August 1st and I'm strongly leaning toward just converting it online. But um, that kind of requires a lot of adaptive thinking and changes along the way. And because we've never done this before, right, I'm planning on talking to my students about what do they need, what's working, and perhaps some things will change and wanting to keep track of that in some tangible way. Yes, I could put it in my Google Calendar and there's something about physically, again, having that physical tangible thing is really important. So um, I numbered all of these. I have week zero as the you know starting week of prep week before the semester starts. And then I have week one, two, three, four, so on, until the end of the semester, which is week 16. And this is where I'm going to be tracking like all of the things that are going to be happening in class, our project work, our homework, and my admin stuff. So what that looks like is 
For example, I write down right away on pen the stuff that is for sure. So Labor Day, I know is for sure. That's not changing. I know that I'm going to need to finalize my syllabus. I'm going to finalize my Canvas site, email my class, just a little prep email, what to expect and where to go. And there's just some things that I know happens right away on the first day and readings that happen. And things haven't really changed yet because there hasn't been enough time. And then I'm going to continue that. And then eventually, I think um, more emergent stuff will start to happen. The student needs will start to come through. And then more adjustments happen after week two. So I put down the due dates that are, aren't going to change there. And then what's important is I have these Amazon sticky notes. Um, I'll put the link down below. But I just have them color-coded for different things. Um, blue is for activities in class. This is for their major course project. This is for their homework, their readings, and then my administrative grading stuff. And how I'm gonna use these is that, for example, starting in week three, some things might shift. I know that the day, the day one, I'm gonna be talking about this reading inquiry. I'm gonna be finalizing project groups and most likely we'll be able to keep this deadline. This one usually doesn't need to move. But then things in class might come up and we don't get to some of those things. So I think that in class we'll be able to talk about research terms and issue maps, but maybe we won't. And we'll have to move that, you know, either to Tuesday or move it to the following week and stuff like that. So this allows me to kind of see what do I have to deal with? What has to be on my lesson plan for the day? And what can be moved around? And then I don't lose it. So if I need to carry it to the next week, I can hold on to it and not lose track of it as I shift the course to what the students need. So I'm going to continue doing this for the rest of the semester using these sticky notes. They fit perfectly within the shape of the, the week. I think this really works for me because even during this semester, in past years, I've taken post-it notes to map out, okay, this is what I'm doing today. And even if it's just for Tuesday, Thursday of that week, I can um, manipulate what stuff goes where and it gives me an easy, simple way to see what the upcoming time looks like. Again, this is because I'm going to be in dialogue with the students about how they're handling things, what's going on. If we need to shift some stuff, I'm happily going to do that in order to maintain that like appropriate level of discomfort and, and disequilibrium for them to continue learning without shutting down and for me to stay sane. And we're going to learn things as we go. So having the flexibility of these post-it notes, I'm really excited for. So that's how I'm going to try and kind of keep track of some things. And this will probably go into my planner. Like this is just for me to visualize what's going on in class. And then the tasks will translate over into my planner to do the actual work. So what are your questions about teaching and planning for the fall or this year? Let me know down below. And I'll do my best to at least share my perspective. And I know that, you know, we're all in different circumstances. We're all in different contexts. But let's help each other out. Share in the comments. Let me know. If you like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe. But otherwise, I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you next time. Bye.